Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be with you here in Berlin for the film festival. Maybe you could just begin with a really brief introduction to your film. For people who don't know anything about it, what can they expect? Well, I'm Estival Izurresola. I'm the director of 20,000 Species of Peace, which is a portrait of a, of a transition, but it's the transition of a family and the, the way they are used to look at the younger kid. Mm -hmm. This kid is uh, seen as a boy up to, up to the, the starting point of the film. But in this summer voyage, uh, the, she will uh, acknowledge and gather the, the self-confidence enough to express how she feels. And I want to explore how it affects and how it impacts on the rest of the members of the beehive and how all of them learn something new about themselves also, thanks to this moment. And for your feature debut, uh, not an easy topic to tackle. Um, where did your story begin? Did it begin with the family setting and, and the place? Did it begin with a story about gender identity and the character? What was your starting point and why did you want to tell the story? I had always been interested in, in topics as uh, identity, body and gender. It, they appear already in my previous works. But um, it's true that the very beginning of this precise story has to do something with a tragic uh, event that happened in two, uh, 2018 in the Basque Country. A teenager, a uh, 14-year-old boy, trans boy, committed suicide uh, because, well, he thought that with this tragic decision he would be able to make society more aware of the reality he was experiencing and also many young kids uh, in his own situation. But he left a very hopeful uh, letter where he evoked this uh, possibility, uh, this uh, scenario that could be easier and more um, f um, friendly to people like uh, he, for the, for the ones coming behind him, you know? Mm. A scenario more tolerant and with more acceptance for them. So I tried to, to take this letter and try to make a film that could represent a bridge uh, between our reality and this scenario he was projecting. Mm. So I could help um, the audience to get close to a reality that I had the privilege to know, thanks to many different families that opened their, their intimacy to me mm. and allowed me to observe and to understand their, their lives in such a natural and, and lovely and tender way that I wanted to, to offer the audience, no? to have the, the same experience as, as I did. Mm. And uh, one of the things that's very striking is just how naturalistic all the performances are and how lived in these characters seem um, as though they really are a, a family. Um, how do you decide on your cast? And in particular, Sophia, I mean, I think she's new to the screen entirely. Um, so that must have been a bit of a risk, but one that very much paid off. Yes, the, the cast process was very um, intense for me because uh, the, the fact that the family had to, to feel real was very important. Mm -hmm. And of course, I took into consideration also the capability of these adults uh, professional actresses, their uh, skill and abilities to to improvise and to get really present uh, because they were going to work with kids that uh, will not always uh, be respecting the lines of the text and mm -hmm. moving in the marks. So they had to be really prepared to, to be able to go ahead with the script mm -hmm and at the same time uh, being very present to the moment and to react. So um, I'm really happy with the adults, uh, actresses, because they, I think that they have made a great uh, work. So in order to, 
to achieve this um, family mood, uh, one of the most important things for me was to 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 spend as much time as possible in rehearsals before the the shooting, creating uh, scenes and situations that weren't exactly the ones that uh, were going to be in the shoot. Mm. Uh, so the um, the real ones in the in the script were still going to be new and fresh for the kids, but these situations uh, of the rehearsals uh, allowed me to to work on the conflict to the main conflicts that I was going to to portray afterwards in mm. the shooting. So we made a mm, lot of many different kind of of uh, situations uh, within the between the sister brothers but mm. also uh, mother and grandmother and making these formulas so mm. it really felt real no mm. and was there any ever a, a debate about um, casting a cisgender girl for for the character or or would you consider have, have it being a trans girl but do you think it made any difference or I think there's a lot of debate at the moment about casting and who can play which roles. Was that a consideration? Of course it was, um, but it was a really um, complicated casting um, because it was very important for the girl to speak Basque also because it really plays a significant uh, role, Basque, in, in the story. And there are not so many fluently uh, Basque speakers, um, sadly, in the Basque country, because it has been a really historically oppressed and repressed uh, language. And this is the result of this. Mm. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to be trans. I, mm. Well, this uh, a wish list to be trans, to know Basque, and to be. There were uh, to be a great actress, mm -hmm. <laughs> the best. So <laughs> there were perhaps many, lots of requirements, and I I decided that, that the most important one should be her capability mm. to to perform such a complicated um, character because she's in mostly all the um, uh, scenes of the film. And she goes through a very, um, a lot of uh, moods, a lot of uh, emotional qualities, and that was the first need for me. Mm. And of course, I know that uh, it's this debate about the legitimacy, legitimacy mm. of, uh, of the representations of uh, trans characters, but in this case, I also think that that we are talking about a minor and underage uh, person, and I don't feel like uh, I'm um, the person that to start speaking about uh, uh, her um, uh, sexual identity. I mean, I don't do it neither about the the other rest of the of the characters. So what I really uh, decided to do is uh, at least. Uh, I wanted to to cast just girls because the, the the character is feeling like that from the beginning. Even if the rest don't do don't uh, see her like that yet, mm. but she's feeling like that. So my main my my political at, at least decision was to to um, to put a girl playing this character and not a boy pretending to be uh, someone that he's not mm. really, you mm. know? And I wonder if you could say a few words about your kind of approach in terms of the look and feel of the film and, and the aesthetics of it, um, kind of using handheld camera work. And as we said, um, ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and whether you sort of take influence from other filmmakers, thinking maybe of Ken Loach or the Dardenne brothers, of course, Carla Simons, Alcaraz from the Berlinale last year, um, or if it's something that comes to you sort of from, from your own creativity. Yeah, I wanted uh, in one of my biggest uh, challenges for the film was to how to approach this um, 
dual point of view because I didn't want to make just a, like a one character driven film going go going with um, Aitor Coco Lucia's character. But as I wanted to talk about uh, transformation, the others were so important also, especially the mother. So I go with both of them and I have to really measure and try to keep this balance between, between these two characters, also giving them uh, a specific uh, visual treatment yeah. uh, while going through going with uh, Lucia Lucia's character I thought it was interesting to to put the camera in at her um, height no to to be able to see the world as she she does mm. in this uh, exploration of this new territory this summer mm. knowing these people and and their their traditions and everything. So being so close to her and in her height um, allowed me also to to make this portrait of of this close shot of a kid being being impacted by the off shot, you know, uh, how the adults universe comes from the outside and, and gets uh, an impact on her, no? Mm. Uh, while when following the mother um, was perhaps more interesting to open the shot and to see how uh, once we have uh, grown up, no? And, and mm. uh, we are already integrated in this familiar system. It's the big, the big picture, no? Uh, these uh, wider shots help me to um, show many different characters at the same time mm. or different levels where things were going all on also with other characters mm. in second or third terms while in the first term perhaps we have another another conflict of the film no mm. for me as it is an uh, exploration of identity and I feel identities as something also fluid that moves and that keeps growing and mm -hmm. and evolving. Uh, mm, decisions like uh, uh, holding the camera, moving and avoiding the static um, shots were also meaningful in this sense. Mm. Uh, like um, camera following the characters and, and growing and evolving with them and mm. and and following their pulls. I don't know, with their pulls? Mm. Uh, pulls? Pulse. Pulse. Yeah. And yes, and and trying to, to make it as naturalistic as possible. Uh, avoiding extra diegetic music and and yes, trying to offer the audience this possibility of feeling it like if they could open a window and, and see what's going on inside this family. Mm. Of course, this kind of reference, as you mentioned, like Darden Brothers can lodge very close to social issues, also very important for me, also as Lucrecia Martel, um, regarding these um, family relationships and how mm. this tension between the the individual and the collective uh, affects us mm. uh, are, have been important reference. And just very quickly, just a final question, you know, what people can take away from watching the film, because it is a tricky subject. And I think by humanizing these stories, it allows people a way in to try and understand them. And ultimately, you know, even her mother is still looking for her identity. And there's a role reversal where she sees in some ways her da now daughter it seems more sure of herself. So we, we end up looking for identities all our lives in different ways, and this is just one aspect of that. Of course, that's what. Uh, that's why I wanted to make this double. Um, this um, yes, two two main characters portrayed: the mother and the and the daughter, because for me this. Uh, Trans identity is one more expression of the human uh, diversity, no? Of the different ways of living and feeling and loving and 
expressing ourselves. So um, I would say that is under the umbrella of identity mm. and and um, and exploring also uh, how do all these women of the family uh, belonging to different generations mm. have felt and experienced um, this uh, tag of womanhood, how this uh, this uh, idea of being a woman have limited them in uh, regarding to their ex own explorations of sexuality, desires, uh, careers, and and how it has been in, in these different generations mm. uh, in order to to make a, a wider portrait of of what could being a woman mean if it means something because I think that is no a woman but there are many women no mm. and that links a little bit also with the title of the film. Mm. As many as bees, <laughs> as speech as bees. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing all that with me. Can't wait for everyone else to see this incredible film and really enjoy presenting it here in Berlin. Thanks so much. Thank you Thank very you. much.